Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Thank you so much hey. for taking the time to speak with me. Um, so initial reactions to the nominations for each of you for, for Ibiza? Oh, man. Um, yeah, I was, yeah, I, yeah, this was my reaction. <laughs> I don't really know how to put it into words. Uh, because like uh, the Biff is a awards body that I'm, I, I really respect and and cherish. So to be nominated or even to be like recognized by the, the body is just like, yeah, it's really, I'm, I'm really elated. So yeah, super grateful, super honored. And you Remy? Um, I think it's, I mean, it's pretty insane in my head. Um, like I, I, I've been wanting to make films for ages. And so I spent a lot of my life like watching things at the, the Biffers and stuff and imagining what it could be like to, you know, have a film and be nominated and stuff for it to happen just kind of doesn't fully make sense yet. Hmm. And what do you think the importance is of awards like these, particularly, you know, supporting British independent film, but also kind of driving forward, I think, diversity both in front and behind the camera? Um, well, I guess, like Shops are saying, like the, 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 I think it's really important to celebrate um, independent, British independent film, because I think so much of the film landscape in this country is, um, I guess, mostly focused on the bigger players, the, the Hollywood system. And so sometimes it could be hard when you're making smaller films to stay above the water. And so this is a really wonderful way to celebrate all the hard work and all the cinephiles and the people who really put in, I guess, their life to make the films they want to make. And it's, it's lovely to be recognized by them. And coming to the film itself, his house. So, you know, this is kind of an interesting combination of things happening. You know, this, the kind of familiar, the haunted house kind of concept and, you know, an immigration story, but then it's all kind of done in, in a new way. So Remy, what was your inspiration for telling the story? And Sophie, what was your attraction to the role? I guess my, like, I think, and I hope this is the case for the future. Like I, I, I grew up like most people loving the, the movies you would see in the cinema, whether that is um, the big blockbusters or even like the classics, like Hitch, the Hitchcocks um, and the Spielbergs. And, and I always felt that if I was going to make movies, it would, I would probably be inspired by them, but wanting to tell things which felt closer to home, that was more, um, put, that felt more relatable, whether that's ideas about assimilation or being a person of color or being othered in the United Kingdom, these themes resonate with me. And if there was a way I could take those themes and put them in a spectacle that, that I love so much, I think that's the kind of place that I'd, I'd like to make films in. Yeah. So I guess, yeah. I just, I, I think the, the, the story that Remy had crafted was excellent and so layered. And for me, like it all starts with the script and it all starts with the story that we're telling. And if I'm engaged by it, then I'm interested in the project. And if it's just another, it, 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 it felt entirely new. You know, there are a lot of stories that are out there at the moment that feel like they are remakes or rehashes of the same um the same sort of stories that we've seen over and over again. Like classic stories do get retold, but I think that Remy just added a real whole different layer and a different perspective. And I was just really excited by the script. So I definitely wanted to be a part of the project. And do you feel quite like, optimistic about the film industry in terms of diversity? And, or do you think there's still a lot more that needs to be done? And so that's why Vivas are important because it can push for change. Yeah. The, like the, the landscape is a lot better than it was five years ago, better than it was 10, better than it was 15. Um, but it's just because it's better doesn't mean it's the best that it can be. Mm -hmm. And doesn't mean we should take our foot off the gas in terms of making sure that we're getting more perspectives. It can only add to the richness of our storytelling if we allow more people to tell their stories and other stories, you know? Um, so I'm 
super it's, it's, it's hard like i'm really grateful to the people who are opening the doors because they are great gatekeepers but also i don't want to like sing for joy that this thing is being done because it's sort of the way the world should be you know you yeah. can only pat someone back so much for doing what they were supposed to be doing yeah and if you are a gatekeeper and you're looking for the best stories then you should be looking everywhere rather than just amongst people who look like the people who have been always been making stories you know what i mean yeah i, I, I would hate for people to look at us and see this as um a success or evidence for change i think um a lot of times anomalies there are anomalies in cultural movements and so sometimes you make the mistake in seeing them as signifiers of change when actually sometimes it just we need to be wary to take the foot off the pedal just because we think like that we're out here and hopefully people i hope that people see this and are more excited to invest in i guess different stories and different different viewpoints and i guess different people yeah absolutely well i think i'm out of time but um best of luck with the awards and thank you so much thank for you. taking the time to speak with me